And so this actually, you know, this formula gives you this structural information. Uh, what you're left with is basically the n to, to count the total of electrons. <coughs> so this is going to be um, 4 plus 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 6 plus 1. So that's 7, 8, 12, 14, and 18. <coughs> that's 9 pairs. We've used up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, we're making the bonds. Seven, we put the ninth one there that takes account of the electrons. You see that that leaves these, this part of here without its filled up tet. So basically, you end up with a double bond. And that matches the name, <coughs> which is so the E part says two carbons. The E part says it's a carbon carbon double bond. There it is. Then that whole part of the incest is an OH group, which you see there. <coughs> so in each case here, we can simply say, okay, this is a SP2 carbon, uh, this one is SP2. We can basically do the same thing as we have here. Um, and again, <coughs> this, this now, I mean, you don't have free rotation around here, uh, but um, it actually doesn't matter because. Unlike the cis transisomer, this one doesn't have a cis transisomer. Um, so the other example is this oxirane, as it's called. Um, you see it's called ethylene oxide. And that just basically, here, this is, so these both have triple names. The first one, this one here is vinyl alcohol, because this, this group here will have a single a double bond between two carbons. Uh, typically it's called a vinyl group as well. Um, so, <coughs> This one's a little bit interesting because what you have here now is the structure here, and the oxygen actually sits here. So you have this three-membered ring, as it's called. This is actually this oxalate uh, that this basically says it's a three-membered ring. Um, again, we have nine pairs of electrons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that are taken up in this carbon. Carbon, carbon, sorry, carbon, um, hydrogen, etc. bonds. That's the last pair. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. <coughs> we look at that now and say, okay, um, around this carbon we have one, two, three, four single bonds. So it's bouncy is filled, it's not dead. Same for this one, oxygen. Same, we have uh, four pairs of electrons around it. Um, so in each case, um, for oxygen, we have SP3 hybridization. For this carbon, we have SP3 hybridization. For this carbon, we have SP3 hybridization. <coughs> now clearly, they're not going to be um, perfect 109.5 degrees in terms of the bond angles. Uh, this is actually quite uh, a strange molecule. And in fact, this is used this is an intermediate in actually making plastics. Polyethylene plastics actually use this. So, I want to just work these through so you get a sense of how to work these multi center. You, know, you have a number of atoms that each of them can function as a central atom. In each case, you know, you've done the same, you've basically used electron, you know, used bonds as necessary, and gone ahead and put lone pairs uh, first on the electron, you have oxygens, yeah, in this case, oxygen. And then, um, as in this case up here, uh, we see we, you know, we've got one lone pair on carbon, we have to form a double bond. And you, you can sort of work from 